Welcome to the next part of my Atari 65 XE restoration project. I can see here that my new power supply has arrived and it wasn't expensive but it was pre-made. It was highly recommended on the eBay page and it's a 5 volt at 2 amp. So let's just plug that in. And we'll switch it on. So there's no noise on the speaker now, so I'm really happy with that. Although we still have the background noise on the screen, but it is composite and it could be the TV, it could be a few things, it could be the lead. I'm not too worried as long as the sound's gone away. I've been just doing a little bit of playing with the S Drive Max and I found if I want to load and save basic stuff I needed um, DOS 2.5, Disk Operating System 2.5 so if we just put that onto Disk 1 and reset That's now booted and it's booted with the disk operating system installed and then if I load the disk that I formatted onto drive 2, load, I'm still getting used to this keyboard, it's so strange having the control and shift in the wrong place, uh, so D2 colon test dot BAS and the shift's a bit sticky as well so that's loaded my test program off disk 2 which is just print hello so I'm really happy that I've managed to get the disk system working so that if I want to uh, do some programs I can do I downloaded the manual which has some test programs in there so I might sit down and, and type some of those in and uh, see how we go So the subject of this video is going to be the tape drive. I've got some new blank tapes that have arrived. Let's switch off. And we'll unplug the S Drive Max. And plug in the tape drive. So this is um, an XC12. And it's powered directly from here. So we'll switch on. Okay. Now I know that um, from my research, again, I'm new to all of this, is that uh, it won't do some things until the Atari tells it to do. But I can rewind. So let's close in on the tape. So I can rewind but I can't fast forward and I can't play but that's because I need to do something on here so if I do C load it makes a noise and then I press enter I get that buzzing sound and then play works so it does fast forward so it does rewind but it hasn't loaded anything that I've saved. So let's just do a new one. I'm just going to skip past anything that might be on the tape and we'll zero. So 10. Ten. Another tape test. So now we do C, 
save and we hit return so now we do play and record and press enter and I've got the counter at zero so we hear that it's making the noises and the tape is going Okay, the tape has now stopped. So I'm going to rewind the tape back to zero. The tape's now back at zero. Let's do a reset. So now if we do C, load, press play, press return. The tape is moving and we can hear the noise from the tape. So the noise was there, it was quiet, and the, the Atari hasn't done anything. So that is the problem that I've got with this tape unit. So it is trying, it is saving something, but it's not loading it back in afterwards. And I think I should be able to fast forward, regardless of, of what the Atari is doing, but the play and record is activated. So I think the first thing to do is to take the tape drive apart and have a look and give it a clean, clean up the heads, look for any problems inside, look at the contacts on the controls, see if we can see anything. So this is the Atari XC12. I guess we start with the screws. Now that one's got signs of corrosion. There we go. So it is quite dirty. I've never ever tried to, to work on the tape drive before, so this isn't Again, this is new to me. Uh, so that's just one belt that operates that. So we can see on that wheel, I'm doing forward and rewind. So the mechanism is making contact. So 
So it's not a mechanical issue of why it's not fast forwarding. Play is moving forward okay. Let's have a look on the back. The belt doesn't feel too loose. Two wires that go down there, LED. So there are springs on those keys. And they seem intact. And then underneath here, there are switches for the rewind and the fast forwards. Let's buzz those out. We've got the trusty Vici. Okay, that's interesting. Look, that one buzzes out. That one does not. So there's a problem with that one. That one, which is the forward. So we need to look at that sensor switch. And then clean up this, clean up the heads. It could also be something on this component board underneath is out of spec or it could be something wrong somewhere. Um, so we'll look at how that can come off. I think first let's just get the compressor going and just give that a blow. So those switches are just like reed switch um leaf switches so it could be that the contact on the end is dirty it also looks like it's slightly bent on one side so um it could be that the conductive part isn't making good connection so what do we need to take that board off. There's like a, a plastic cable tie thing. And then it looks like these two connections on the top. So I'm just going to put a red wire around that one, red for right. And we'll desolder these two connections. I think that's just a switch. 
so it might not be too important so yeah that just goes to a switch let's pull that one through take that off and I'm going to keep my finger on it and then I'm going to put that back on is there a So that is our circuit board and then there are two switches okay I've got some white lithium I'm just going to spray some into this And then a cotton bud and I'm just going to put some on these mechanical joints so this is the circuit board that was underneath those are here trapped uh, so I might have to look up the chip so HA71324P if we're having problems and it's not the alignment of the heads it could be any of these components that are it could be out of spec we could have bad solder joints and let's get that in so this is our fast forward switch so we need to straighten that out Needs to come forward a bit, and that one wants to go back. Um, it's got a, a bit of cardboard. I'm going to put some deoxit on a cotton swab. Just get that on those contacts. And then uh, from watching John's Arcade, we want to use the card and pull the card through the contacts like he does with the leaf switch. Right, let's flip that back over and do another shut up multimeter. Let's do another continuity test. If I can. Alright. So probe is on. And 
it's not working. Okay, so that it does work if I'm doing it that way. So if I'm putting the probes on the back, so do we have a problem going? No, that's okay. And that's okay. That's okay. And that's okay. So that's okay. That I think we'll try that. Uh, cotton board and IPA. Just clean up the record and the playback head. Do we do the same on, on that roller as well? Do we use IPA on that? I guess I should watch Techmoon for uh, tape maintenance. Just get in there. So the keys are, are quite dirty, so um, they look like they're going to need a, a, a better clean than, than just this one. The whole temp mechanism is quite corroded in places. Let's go back round that way. Let's put these connections back on the bottom. Right, and now that we've just put that board back on, let's check the continuity of these switches again. Yay, we have continuity on both of those switches. So I'm guessing that fast forward and rewind will now work. Which So that was those bent switches. Um, so will just cleaning the heads make any difference to loading and saving? Let's put this back in for the moment. We need to clean inside this case. Just giving this a quick a quick wipe down. Uh, we're missing the feet as well.
Uh, so um, let's power it on and see what we've done. So we're back at the Atari. Let's switch it on. So one problem fixed. It's now, it will now fast forward and rewind regardless of what that is doing. So let's try saving something again. So just another stupid program. See. Save, I've zeroed my tape. Play and record. Okay, let's rewind that back to zero. C, load. Sounds like there's loads of noise coming from the tape. So no. Uh, we haven't fixed the actual record and playback. Unfortunately, I don't have an original tape that I can try. Perhaps I should look for an original tape before I try to do anything else. I wonder if we can use... Shut up. All right, so I think I need to find um, an original tape or look for some kind of utility to uh, to see what's going on and compare the the recording that I've got on here to something new. So I guess that is all we can do for this part of this video. I've looked at the programs that I've saved and they look okay. And I found um, some WAV files online that I've recorded to tape and um, they don't play back as well and it looks like that the left and the right is recording okay so I'm not sure about the tape alignment but what I've noticed is I get massive amounts of hum when the motor's turned on but if I touch the shield with my hand inside the Atari the hum goes away so that's making me wonder if there's some kind of grounding problem with the electronics. And I've found the diagrams and I've looked on board and there are these capacitors which are 220 microfarad and these ones which are 4.7. And I've looked through my parts bins and I have those parts. So I think I'm just going to replace those caps and we'll test it again. So I'm wondering if, the, if there's a, like a um, grounding problem which is stopping the, the audio from coming through properly. If I reverse this audio when I recorded it to tape and put the data through the audio side because on, on these tapes the, the right side is data and the left side is audio and the program that I downloaded was the tape for instructing how to write BASIC and it had like a vocal site where it was talking to you. So I've been using that as a, as a way to determine what's coming in the left and what's coming in the right. So I think we'll do these caps first and see what that does with the grounding issue. I might also need to look at that switch because the switch plays a part in recording may need to look at this which is an operational amplifier and then there's also the transistors that are part of the circuit uh, but first let's do these caps let's just uh, clean out the solder sucker and negative facing this way down Uh, 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 uh,
So this is a 220 microfarad 16 volt. There's Inserted. Okay, that's the three two twenties. Now we've got the four point sevens. Where the thing goes. Uh, so I, th I took that off the bottom by mistake, and I should have just left that on the top. Okay, so we've replaced all those capacitors, let's uh, give it a try, see what it does. My friend Joe, who's a, a mastering engineer and does restoration and preservation of various formats, lent me this tape unit and I've got on here, first of all, the recording that I took off the, the the data set so where I've actually saved it um, I'm not going to blast it out I'm just going to play it through the headphones so we can hear it And we can also see that the signal is on the right side. So it sounds like it's recorded good. And, and was on the right side, which is the program side. So the actual unit has recorded my saved program. Okay. So now we've got our tape with our saved program um, but what I wanted to show you after that was what I also found so let's put this near the TV so if we do a C load we get the beep But then we get the noise. Actually sounds better now. It's not making as much noise when I... Wow, it's the first time it's done that. That's actually better than it was before. Before, it would just ignore that, flat out ignore it. Maybe we should try saving something now that we've got a better signal. Um, and then I've also been using the poke. Poke. So if we do poke 540... 18,52 we can turn the, the tape motor on
let's see if we can save something now. to save and load a program oh wow that's so awesome so it was literally uh, replacing the caps on that board oh, I'm so jazzed that is so awesome oh so happy so tape drive now working although I still think I should get uh, an actual proper tape and try loading something but I can load and save my basic stuff Oh, I'm so pleased. So doing that cap kit saved the day. So I'm really pleased we've got the tape drive loading and recording from itself. Next video will be retro brighting. Hopefully I'll see you soon.